With the plaque and gauge setup, if we go ahead, what we do is we put the gauge, and this is a gauge and a plaque set very similar to how mouthpiece makers will make mouthpieces. Um, they'll use a gauge and they'll find where the curve is, and they'll make different curves, and depending on the curve and the opening of the mouthpiece will be how that mouth, particular mouthpiece responds. What we're doing here is we take our gauge, we line this line right up here with the tip of the mouthpiece, and we put nice firm pressure at the bottom of the window of the mouthpiece. That's this portion of the open portion that the reed vibrates on. And we take our reed geek gauge and we slip it through and we find where the facing is on our mouthpiece. So this mouthpiece here sits around, oh, let me get it over here, sits around about 24 millimeters. So that tells us where our curve is starting. So, for most people, they're like, okay, that's 24 millimeters. What does that mean to my read? So let's look here again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our read out. We're gonna put it on our gauge, take a pencil, and we're gonna mark 24 millimeters. So this area right here. This is actually where the facing and the curve starts on this, on this read. So on this tenor read, besides the read having to be flat, this area here is the, is the airplane wing that needs to be balanced and vibrating equally as you're blowing on the mouthpiece. Um, a good way that this also the plaque and gauge allows you to check is we can now put the reed on our mouthpiece, put the gauge down, and if you see on this new reed that's been sitting in the box for a while, the gauge is a little bit not really locking in at this area. So this would be an example visually of how if you pull a reed out of the box, lick it and it swells, how it's actually not seating well on the mouthpiece even before we started playing. And this is one reason why you go through boxes of reeds and try to find one that's working. And then it works for a while and then what happens is it swells and the wood takes in moisture and starts to expand and starts to warp and you start to lose a seal and you think that the reed plays stuffy or it's blown out. So that's why the Reed Geek has been such an efficient tool to work with, as in other videos. So again, the first thing we're going to do on the Reed is flattening. As you know, I hold my hands, and people do ask, how do you hold the Reed Geek? I hold my hands like pointers, like I'm pointing here at people right here, and I actually support it with my forefinger, and I actually put my other hand here, so I'm controlling the Reed Geek in my hand, rather than just going back and forth and flattening this way. I'm actually getting good control. When I turn it around to flatten the rest of the other side, again, I'm holding my, my forefinger out here to control this. So, as in other videos, what I'm doing is I'm just putting, this is the Black Diamond model against the Reed, and you can see we're starting to find the high spots of the Reed. And I will do this to every new Reed out of the box, and this is true for any brand of reed you play. All reeds will move, all reeds will swell, all reeds need to be geeked with the reed geek. So we're going over here and already just a little bit, we can still see the stamp, so it's not taking that much on this particular reed. We'll turn it around. I am actually going back and forth. I actually just push forward and back and I'm just releasing off the tip of the reed here. We're just going ahead, we're sealing the pores ultra smooth. We're getting any ridging from manufacturing off here so it sits very flat on our side rails of our mouthpiece. So just a little bit here, we're gonna put back on our mouthpiece. I can already feel that this reed, even without a ligature, is seating better, it's seating tighter on this table. Boom, I put my gauge in without even a ligature on trying to hold it and this gauge is saying boom we're locked in right at this facing so i know before i've ever blown this reed that we're now sealing we're getting good compression in our engine and our carburetor here the next thing we want to do as we talked about is working that balance from left to right and we're to adjust this is actually telling you where your facing is so if we take our plaque i can actually draw i'm going to draw a little sense here of the spine of the reed. Okay, and we don't again have to do this to every reed, but this is showing you that this is where our facing is. This is how long our wing is. This is exactly the area that we need to start making sure the reed is balanced on the mouthpiece. Um, we have a diagram right back here 
And if we look, if you can see, you have the reed right here, and then we have our nose and our spine, and we have the cavities all shaded in here. This is the area that we want to clean up. I want you to think of this nose right here as the kind of your nose in the spine. In here are all your nasal cavities. And the more fiber we have in this area, the stuffier that reed is going to be. So the more you're blowing against all this congestion in this area, trying to make that wing vibrate to the beeline here, that's where the facing is as we've shown and with the gauge. So the object is to get this to be ultra flexible along the facing and then clearing these cavities and then blending in here on these vector lines a to now get our energy to go to the back of the reed we're not working in this portion because it's already been cut and the vamp has been cut to a length that's usually within the realm that you need to be it's more about opening these cavities and getting this balanced along the facing line so if i come back down here and we look at our reed example right here what we're going to do again is we're going to now start opening this area up we can also use our plaque and gauge some people like to work with the gauge so with the reed geek you have the tip again is our pencil profiler you can actually use that to work in this area just like a pencil eraser to work and balance and clear up some of this cavity and some of these channels in here and i can just lightly go back and forth one way i do test this is i actually bend i actually use my forefinger and i've said this in other videos your hands are very, very sensitive to these motions. The more sensitive you get with your hands, the more you actually can find very, very, almost to a micron of thickness. It's really quite amazing. I'm feeling right now that this left side of the reed is heavy. And if we can see this in the light, I'm not sure if it'll show up or not. Um, you can see we have a heavy reel coming up right in here. In addition to our nasal cavities here, to this sort of congestion that we can see on either side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tool to just first initially go right along the edge. And with the black diamond, the longer curve makes that kind of nice. You can kind of work that a little bit easier uh, than the classic. But on all the reed geeks, even on the bigger reeds like the saxophone, just dragging the tool very lightly, you can go ahead and just a little bit that's already opened up the flexibility so we're getting an even flex along that airplane way so once we're on it then we're again we're going to go back into here and try to open up this reed so it blows clear and blows free so we can go ahead as i've showed do it on the plaque or doing on the hand you can also just use any of the edges of the reed geek i actually because i used to work with a knife i'll come right in here and actually just scrape almost like a knife I'm actually working and opening up that area and then blending the vector as in the picture behind me into those areas. So we're clearing up our cavities up in here so we got nice flexibility and then we're always blending into this back area of the reed. So we're clearing up using either the pencil raise for making small adjustments or scraping back this way and then we can go ahead and we can just kind of blend back this way um, with the reed. Now, once we have this clear up and flexible, if you still feel that, well, the reed feels really flexible and it's a lot free and clear, but it just feels a little resistant. That's telling us that our spine area near the tip here is still maybe a little too thick. And you can actually see how far that spine comes up just by putting the reed gear. You can actually take our curves in the G4 and you can work this area back. It's actually following the contour a little bit. And what you're doing is you're just rounding the spine and flattening it ever so slightly to get a little more flexibility in our tips, our tip vibrates. So um, basically, the classical reed and the jazz cut reed, a classical cut of a reed will tend to have a much higher spine profile of here, maybe a little 
thicker coming in here and actually coming up more towards the tip. That adds a lot of core and a lot of darkness to your sound. As we get into a jazz cut, we will tend to flatten this tip out a little bit more and the spine runs further. So you've got a little more flexibility in here. It's a little freer blowing. What this will do is it kind of gives you a bigger sound and a broader sound and adds some brightness to the sound and it's easier blowing. If the spine gets too far back or and we got it too flat, then the reed could actually collapse out a little too soon. And we don't want to get too technical. So what you can do is you can actually just work that area a little bit here with the reed key just to free up that tip a little bit. So to summarize, the plaque and gauge, and to go back, you can do all this on your plaque and gauge also. I'm used to working in my hands, but a lot of people, where it says tip work, you can go ahead and you can work and do those profiling on your plaque um, in addition to using your measurements here. But we do not work on the bottom side of the plaque because this is we want to stay very pristine to measure our facings on, on our mouthpieces. So again, to summarize, we're making sure our reed is ultra flat on our mouthpiece. We can use the plaque and gauge to gauge that area that we're doing well. We don't have to use this every time, but it gives us a nice guide. Then we're working on the airplane wing. We're finding where our facing is, we're drawing the line, and then we can draw our sense of a spine. You don't always have to do this, but it's kind of a nice guide. And then we're working this wings of the reed so they're nice and ultra flexible along the facing curve and we're clearing up and erasing any of that congestion, all that fiber so that the reed is freer to blow and then we kind of blend into the back whenever we want to just try to blend the work if we want to work a little bit further into our low notes. Um, you know basically um, the the more we take out of this region of the stuffiness of the congestion, the clearer and freer our reed will be. The more we leave in, the more resistant and a little bit, um, you know, a little bit more husky the reed will sound. So the more we can clear this area, the clearer the sound will be. And that's the balance you want to make given the strength of the reed you use versus how much you're taking out of the reed.